All right guys, Day Noodles here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Steiner D-Ball I2-9007. One of the main reasons you might want this unit is because of its uh, price. This is one of the, if not the cheapest, American-made laser designators that is actually useful in my opinion. Um, this unit uses a IR laser and illuminator compared to the standard D-Ball I2, which has a visible laser and IR laser. So you do have an IR illuminator in place of one of the visible lasers. And if you don't already know, visible lasers are fairly useless on modern firearms. Uh, they only have a few really uh, useful niche uh, kind of roles with like gas masks or something like along those lines. But for your average shooter with night vision, uh, this is going to be the preferred unit over the standard eye too. It is also fairly cheap at that. It's probably, uh, the cheapest, uh, like I said, American-made uh, laser with an illuminator that you would want to buy that is U.S. made. So when you order it, it comes in this nice little uh, plastic case. It's a clamshell case. Uh, inside you have a notice that this is an ITAR regulated product. Uh, your user's manual right here. And uh, you have the unit itself. Uh, you also get an Allen key and you have a pressure pad and a silica packet. And here is a battery for the unit as, as well. This takes a CR123A. Uh, so it's about standard to everything else. Uh, the unit itself, here you go. Take a quick look. As you can see here, this is a class one unit, but it has a class 3R rating, uh, or yeah, it's a class 3R laser product, which means although the laser itself is class one, the illuminator is a little bit brighter than that, but because it's uh, not a focused laser, it's a diffused beam, it's not going to not be eye safe, even though the output is higher than what is considered eye safe. Uh, but this isn't a non restricted quote unquote laser, so uh, you can pick this up no problem, even though it's kind of technically a class three laser. Uh, the mounting bracket here, uh, it's your standard Steiner mounting bracket. It has not given me any issues, although you can switch it out for an aftermarket bracket like all the other Steiner units. Uh, your controls are here, you have uh, off, you have L aim low, which is just the laser, dual low, which is just the laser and illuminator in the low setting, high aim, which is just the laser in the high setting, and then you have dual low high, which is the illuminator is low and the laser is high, or wait, the reversed, the um, illuminator is high and the laser is low. And then you have dual high, which they're both in their high setting. Uh, as you can see here, here's your screw for your safety to keep you from bumping it into the high setting. And to do that, you have to remove that. And it goes right here, so you can keep that if you want. Uh, here's your power button with, so you don't use your pressure pad. The pressure pad is standard to everything like the uh, L3 laser units and surefire pressure pads, uh, they all work with this unit. And your uh, dial controls, you have to use a uh, screwdriver, a uh, flathead screwdriver here. When you, you have the tactile knobs here, you can switch with your hands. Personally, I prefer them to be the same, but I get why they have this, so you can keep your laser sighted, uh, but be able to adjust your illuminator as needed. Uh, your illuminator is focusable here. Although 
personally, I keep it at the, the widest focus. That's where I find it most useful with inside of uh, 200 meters. And you have your lens covers here as well. They're retained. Uh, your battery cap here is also retained. Now for the performance of this laser unit, uh, it's pretty standard for most class one lasers. You're not going to have anything out of the ordinary as far as uh, illuminator performance for in, or the laser performance. They're kind of stuck with what they need to be. Uh, even though this is slightly more powerful than most uh, class one illuminators, it's you're not going to notice any significant performance increase. Uh, it is better, in my opinion, than something like the uh, Adipal C. As far as the illuminator goes, I've had this side by side, and I prefer this unit versus the Adipal C. But it's going to be on par with all of your Class One Steiner units uh, outside of the uh, D2, which uses a uh, LED illuminator. So, uh, as far as the performance goes, as you can see in these video clips. It is definitely usable if you need to use a class one laser, but I always recommend if you can get your hands on one, go with a class three, go with a restricted laser. If you can get one, uh, their performance is going to be considerably, considerably better. Now, as far as the price goes on this unit, uh, you can get these units in pretty cheap. I've seen them anywhere from 800 down to as low as seven maybe even just under that in the six hundred dollar range brand new so that's pretty nice you can get these for pretty damn cheap so a couple of accessories that in my opinion are, are uh, pretty close to must need for this unit uh, is first the rail scales leaf which is a little little piece of uh, material here that you can mount on top of your unit to act as a front sight post uh, as you can see there Instead of having a front sight in front of or behind this unit, you can save space by putting it on top and that allows you to run your uh, laser as far forward on your rail so you don't get splash back from your uh, laser or illuminator or minimize, minimize the splash back as much as possible. And uh, it is sighted for a 50, 200 meter zero with 556. Five, so although you cannot adjust it, uh, it's pretty nice. and. You can adjust it, in fact, if you have a, uh, win a elevation uh, rear sight, but with most rear sights, it's going to give you a 50, 200 meter zero, which is more than enough for a night vision gun, in my opinion. Uh, the other must-have accessory is the Telluric Group um, uh, laser sight uh, paper. This paper has uh, glint tape here in the center, and it has these uh, circles here so you can sight it in for different distances and it gives you a parallel zero and what that means is your uh, IR laser is going to be parallel to where your bullet is going to fall by about an inch so wherever you put your laser it's your bullet is going to fall just an inch to the side of that uh, and this is a must need in my opinion because you do not have a visible laser with this unit so in order to properly sight it in you got to be able to do so uh, with the laser on here. Uh, the standard I2 I also would strongly recommend if you have that as well because the uh, visible laser and the IR laser are independent from one another. So this is a really good thing to pick up if you have an I2 or any IR laser. This is, in my opinion, the best way to focus your IR laser. They make uh, different uh, laser or different targets for different lasers. So you're going to need to specifically get one for your laser and where it's mounted. But it's a really nice product. Uh, other than that, uh, I recommend whatever pressure pad uh, suits your fancy. If the one that comes with it is, is uh, fine for you, by all means. Uh, I prefer the Surefire, but that's not really a must need. That's just personal preference. Unity Tactical also makes the taps. And, and uh, those will work with this and the hot button. Uh, they should also work without a problem. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the future.